So my take on the NBA Finals, um, I'm gonna give the Raptors. You know, I put it on Facebook. Um, this it seems like the the Detroit 2004. Um, you know, when they beat the Lakers, because like nobody is giving, you know, the Raptors a chance to run. And the reason why I'm giving the Raptors the advantage um, or the edge is because I believe that when Kawhi Leonard, you know, rookie year when they ended up playing LeBron and they played the Miami Heat, you know, they were about to win uh, game five. Um, well, actually, game six. They were going to win game six and they were going to end it. The trophy came on the court. You know, they were they were actually about to bring it out. And then we know Ray Allen hit that famous uh, shot. And then Miami came back and ended up winning game seven. Well, uh, you know, as they went back the next year, um, Popovich had a, a meeting. You know, they sat down. They had uh, lunch or dinner or something. And they said, remember what happened last year? So, you know, and also Popovich, I just found out today, I was uh, reading an article um, from back then. They were training in a higher altitude, kind of like with like our, you know, the army would do and stuff like that. So they were ready, you know, and Popovich just adjusted um, in game three and they won three straight and they won that championship, you know. Now, looking at this year, you know, they ended up, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're down 2-0 you know, saying to the Milwaukee Bucks and everybody gave them the advantage and everything like that. But what they failed to realize was, I mean, obviously, you know, I say Kawhi and them, they sat down and had a talk. You got Danny Green and they talked about, you know, championship pedigree and how, you know, you can come back. And so, you know, the Milwaukee got complacent and you just got to sustain um, runs. You know, you got to be able to withhold somebody's punch and they end up winning four. And then all of a sudden they end up playing, you know, the Warriors and the Warriors were riding high on like TV. I think they should just stop watching TV because they listen to these bandwagon commentators. These commentators talk about, oh, you know, whoever's the hottest, they say is the best person in the game, best player in the game. Then you got everybody talking about, oh, well, you know what? Well, well, uh, you know, they don't they don't need Durant. See, they fail to realize the reason why they recruited Durant in the first place was so that they didn't have to face him. You know what I'm saying? Because they knew that they should have beat them. They had that game. They were down 3-1. And they came and ended up, you know what I'm saying, beating them. So that's why I say that, you know, Curry was the best general manager for one year. You know, because, what, right after that, Draymond Green ended up calling, uh, you know what I'm saying, the, the uh, GM for the Warriors. And then they ended up getting Durant. And look what happened. All they needed him was to do was just, you know, uh, you know, kind of, you know, kind of take LeBron out, you know, match him at his points or whatever like that. And then they ended up getting Kyrie to leave and go somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? And that's why Kyrie is thinking about, you know, possibly going back with LeBron. But that's another segment. Um, so they end up doing that. And so with the Warriors, you know, I think they need to stop watching TV. Everybody was like, you know, as soon as Durant went down, oh, they're better without Durant. You know, they, you know, said so they were 73 and 9 and all of that. And I'm just like, y'all fail to realize why they recruited him in the first place. You know, because there's games and finals that, you know, Curry and, you know, Steph and, well, Curry and Steph, <laughs> you know, Curry and uh, Clay didn't have a good game or Draymond. And then, you know, Kevin Durant just, just went off, you know what I'm saying? Because they know how consistent he was, you know, and they won some championships, you know. And so now, you know, because, you know, everybody is telling them, oh, they're better without Durant. And all of a sudden you got this Raptors team that just got confidence. And that's what I say, you know what I'm saying? A jumper ain't nothing but confidence. And they got a leader in Kawhi like, listen, man, we got to finish this thing out. You know, and then you look at, mentally like nobody was prepared you know you got uh you know saying the coach steve kerr was telling them hey listen man we got uh you know like telling them to get back on defense like they get beat after they score a point that's that has nothing to do with don't give me that nine days off ten days off and they talking about well you know all of them they were talking about well, we didn't really know this team well that's why you watch film like y'all had time to watch film on these teams and see how they do and then all of a sudden right you got Kawhi leonard who's like they talking about his body and how he's hobbling and all types of things and everything like that. And all of a sudden, you talking about that. And then, then what happens? Y'all doubling him and giving him an opportunity to just rest. And people think that he has to. That's like people said, oh, if they're going to, the Raptors are going to win, these bandwagon commentators, Kawhi's going to have to go off and have all these points. Well, listen, he gave the ball to Siakam. And what happened? Siakam just got confidence out of nowhere. 
Again, you know, he talked about playing for his father. Look at him. He went at his will. Draymond Green should have never said he was the best, the greatest defender ever. Because when you said that, Siaka just came at him like, all right, well, we going to see. So they, so they doubled Kawhi, you know, instead of letting Kawhi do his thing or whatever and try to make him beat you. And he was giving him an opportunity to rest, you know. And then you look at, you know, uh, Kyle Lowry not really having an opportunity to really, you know, showcase what he can do because he had an off game. But I believe that last uh, three that he shot in game one, you know, which is kind of meaningless, but it still helped him. I think it was much more for his confidence, you know. And then you got Curry when I was listening to his, uh, his um, you know, um, post game comment you know saying after the game you know he said that you know one game don't make a difference you know saying i believe it do because watch this that game that they lost what was it game five against the uh the cleveland cavaliers that was the game that turned it around they end up losing that he never listened to michael jordan michael jordan told him don't forget the ring and they and they forgot about that you know so i just like i said i give the uh raptors the advantage i believe that they're going to do something like i said you know uh, Draymond's definitely going to try to do something, you know what I'm saying? But he's already defeated because, you know, unless he can come back, which is very difficult, he over there arguing with Drake, and Drake don't even play basketball, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, when you like that, and then you got the, the arena, like, they are, like, totally, like, honed in, like, man, like, all that atmosphere and that energy or whatever, all they got to do is just win game two, and all they got to do is win one game at Oracle, and I think it's over because I just I just believe they're not just going to lose at home. You know, and I think all they got to do is sustain the runs. And the way that you stop the Warriors' runs is by getting fouls and going to the free throw line because people hate that. It slows the game down. It gets them frustrated and everything like that, just like Curry did in game one. You know, he tried to do his thing, but he really didn't have no help. You know, they was, you know, not getting back on defense and stuff like that. He was like a team that didn't know what to do, you know. And so, you know, Steve Kirk can only do so much. Like he said, he was he was telling them, like, their transition defense, you know, was just horrible. So I definitely give my, um, you know, I just definitely give the edge to the Raptors. You know, I believe they will win this uh, series. And I believe this is the last year of this dynasty. So either way, Kevin Durant is going to be out because if they lose, they're going to blame it on him. And, you know, and everybody telling them they don't need him. They don't need him. You know, Draymond said that earlier. So, I mean, they're going to have to put up. They talked all that junk. Now you're going to have to put up. Nobody saw the Raptors coming. And don't give me that. Like, oh, we didn't see this team that much and everything like that. Listen, you got it. That's, that's what film is for. You got film and you got tendencies and stuff like that. You got to study. That's what they got all these, you know, saying stats and everything to look at these teams and find out what they are. They should have. They should have known. When they ended up winning game four, it's a possibility that we can play the Raptors or we can play Milwaukee. They should have did a film study. They had all them days off to sit there and watch film. All right, so if, so so we end up beating them, we're going to have to do this. And, you know, Steph tried to do what he could. You know, he did get to the free throw line, made 14 free throws. But they were running them, him and Clay off of the three-point line. They were shooting twos. You know, the Raptors just got to get to the point where they don't foul three-point shooters. But, again, I just don't see the uh, – Raptors losing. I just think they just got what it, you know, saying what it takes to put, you know, saying to, to take them down because everybody just giving them the advantage and it's just like giving the Warriors the advantage. It's just like y'all still got to play. And then all of a sudden you got Boogie Cousins coming back in and he's really not in the cohesive. And I just feel like if Kevin Durant come back, that Kevin Durant's going to try to take over. I just feel like he's going to try to take over and be like, listen, this is why I'm MVP or whatever like that. But you know, if I was him, I mean, I would be careful trying to rush back because, I mean, you about to sign a max contract and just, you know, you got to be careful. But if he can come back, then definitely come back. But we're going to see, you know what I'm saying? And then it's gonna, they're going to go back to that half-court offense and we're going to see what they can do or whatever like that. So we're just going to see how it is. But when they try to double uh, Kawhi instead of letting Kawhi kind of tire himself out, man, everybody just got confidence. And then you got... Again, these bandwagon commentators. Oh, Van Bleek ain't going to do this again. Y'all, they just love to just say stuff like that. And then he hit that one shot, man. Come on, man. Like, listen, when these people get confident and then, listen, it's one thing when the Warriors, everybody talk about how them favorites and they were talking about, you know, five times they didn't get to the finals. Watch this. It's one thing when the team has confidence that they can beat you. And then when they had that, it's hard to stop that. And they play, and they just play their game, man. Listen, y'all going to see. People say, oh, man, they invincible. They can't lose. As if, like, the Clippers didn't do nothing. Yeah, they ran through uh, the Blazers, you know. And, and so that's what they did that. And then the other team that they ran, you know, and when they, 
you know, when they beat the Rockets. So you just going to see. So I just get it, like I said, the advantage. So let me know what you think in the comments. All right, I'm out.